start with our special intro, which is if you're here to watch free anime, get the hell off the the episode. <laughs> get the hell off the episode. We are shown at archive, and we are here to talk about it. If you want to see illegal anime, go to any of the illegal anime website and risk getting a computer virus. Don't go to YouTube. This isn't yeah, two thousand. We are. We are not at all just playing episodes. We're talking about episodes. Exactly. And with that, we can start with the intro. Go. And I can say hello, everyone, and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wilkie, and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. And what Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which I just screamed out what the beginning of the episode is. Um, and we're going to be talking about Jujutsu Kaisen today, episodes 40 to 45, six episodes in total, all the ones that we missed because we were too busy with work, we're going to power through them. I have my water right here, there's going to be some fucking discussion in this episode, because <laughs> it's a yeah, lot. Get, get prepared. Yeah. Get prepared. I'm also going to let you know now. We're going to be talking about manga stuff. Feel free to click off the video. We won't be hurt by it. Come back whenever the anime catches up in like five years from now, whenever the animators get finished with what they're doing. Come back here and you can hear it then. But we will be talking about some currently ongoing manga things. Usually I would bleep it out, but literally because of the stuff that we're going to discuss, it's just not possible. It's just going to be talked about. I'm just giving you the heads up. So... Let's get right into it. We're going to start with episode 40. I will also be doing the recaps for this one. So, episode 40, Thunderclap. Um, so, we start, we open up with uh, Jogo realizing that I may have challenged the wrong person to a fight. And <laughs> he's immediately yeah. getting his ass oh, beat. In, in, in existential regret mode. Yeah, he's in that regret mode, and then we cut to the OP, and then we cut to just before then, where we go where we were off previous episode, which was um, Megami and uh, Toji uh, fighting each other. Uh, Megami is going, damn, this guy is really strong and he has no curse energy. What the fuck? That seems unfair. <laughs> he's like a stronger <laughs> version of Maki. <laughs> um... Thanks to Inumaki, the straight the streets are cleared with civilians, so they're good to start fighting each other. So Megami goes like, "I got this. I need to just visualize me winning," and he's gonna go to summon the Divine Dog. And Toji just like by pure like aura intimidates him into summoning a bunch of rabbits instead. Yeah, the the, the rabbit escape for the cloud of hidden Rab rabbit yep and rabbit escape shows up instead and then we get what is probably the greatest bit of animated rabbit violence since watership down <laughs> as they start <laughs> fucking throwing hands some of these rabbits are just like coming back for seconds as they go to fight toji it doesn't even matter because toji at some point is just like you know what fuck it he tosses up the the shank that he had made previously and he cuts it up into a bunch of tiny little pieces no he doesn't even do that he like cuts up a bunch of little tiny pieces and he just shoots it all at the the rabbits with his fingers <laughs> at extreme speed uh and that is the end of the rabbit escape um and the rabbits themselves they just completely get destroyed uh then as the fight is going on, we cut to Panda with Detective Man, who I don't remember his name at the moment, but he reminded me of the detective from uh, Pokemon. That's why I'm calling him a Detective Man. But they're out there and they're still looking for people in the Vale. Panda is saying we need to go to B5 and start helping people. Um, and the other guy is saying, like, no, we need to go look for, like, the little kids hiding in crevices for them. For the little elementary schoolers who might be terrorized by demons, we're staying here for them. And Panda's like, oh, my God, Sensei, you're so you're totally right. We need to do it. So he goes back to looking for kids, and then we get an inner monologue from the teacher. Uh, and the teacher goes, oh, his name is uh, Kutsakiba. Kusakabe? Kusakabe? Kusakabe. Kusakabe. And we get an inner monologue from Kusakabe going like, damn, I just really don't want to get involved in this. It seems yeah, I like, will... <laughs> He is that meme of a kind of who says, I better keep my ass in this office for real. But he's <laughs> understanding. Like a drop of meteor, I better keep my ass <laughs> in this, in this office. office. I'm finished. 
Exactly. I was like, I heard them uh, them demons were able to <laughs> lock up Gojo. I better keep my ass above ground or I'm, fin- I'm cooked. I'm finished. For real. And he's right. He's 100% correct. He's maybe the smartest character in all of Jujutsu Kaisen because he correctly realizes that he is outmatched by everything. Uh, but yeah, that is the current inner monologue that he has, but he also knows that Panda is real desperate to go go help. Uh, before they start, they go back to go looking for more people. They are stopped by two dudes um, who are Manami and Negi, who I assume are from Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, because they're part of Ghetto's group. Uh, yeah, Ghetto's little little crew. Yeah, the crew yeah. of racist uh, sorcerers who all say monkey. <laughs> Uh, which we cut to them then having a conversation, I believe. No, we actually, the next thing we cut to is um, Megami continuing to kind of fight with Toji. And then in between that, we cut to the principal, who I call Kiryu Kazuma, because he has the exact same voice actor, and you cannot hide Kiryu from me. Uh, they're talking <laughs> about <laughs> healing people and how they were able to save two of the people. Um Thanks to the quick judgment of the principal, they're able to kind of help and save some people. And we get the healer lady is the... I forget her name. She's the girl. Shoko. Say it again. Shoko. Shoko. And Shoko starts smoking. He's like, I thought you quit smoking. He's like, I'm just remembering days from when I was a student for a bit. And then we cut back to Megami fighting Toji. And... uh. They're, like, doing some real crazy... It's, like, a lot of fighting. The fight that he does... I think he, like, throws a truck at him at one point. Yeah, he does toss a truck at him. He's, like, running across the rooftops, and he throws a truck at him. Yep, it's pretty crazy. Um, so, as they're fighting, he starts using a... I think he uses his domain expansion. And that causes him to have, like, a flashback of when he was going to sell Megami to the Zenin. Uh, and they're talking about specifically wanting more money if he had a specific domain expansion and stuff like that. Like, depending on how good uh, his son ended up being, how much they would end up paying for him. Um, at this point, the Toji stops fighting Megami and he says, uh, hey, what's your name? And he tells him that his last name is Megami. Shishiguro. Uh, Shishiguro, my bad. Shishiguro. And then he says, uh... Not Zenin, huh? Good for you. And he kills himself, uh, impaling himself. And you can also see at this point he took over. Because uh, the eyes, the way he looked, he looked like he was uh, just like a dead body possessing stuff and going through it. But when he actually chooses to kill himself, you can see that his eyes return to normal and he actually speaks for the first time. So it seems like Toji actually... Um, yeah, he got uh, he got control back. Yeah. For a, for momentarily, but Very, he did. But he did, and he this shocks the hell out of Megami because he is unaware that that is his dad. So he just sees a man kill himself, and he goes, "Damn, I wish I could do that." <laughs> He's like, "This guy's kind of spinning for, for lack of trying, <laughs> not for lack of trying." He takes some notes. He says, "Damn, fight hard, kill yourself." I think he's got the sauce. <laughs> he's got it all right here. Um, he goes to check out the dead body. And he sees he's returned back to the old grandson. Uh, he never n- figures out who he ends up being. He's pretty injured. He decides he's going to go to Shoko so that he can go ahead and get himself healed. Uh, and then that all changes because he gets backstabbed by the shitty guy <laughs> previously, uh, Haruta um, Shigemo. The, the, uh, the guy who fought Nanami and got his ass fucking destroyed. Yeah, the guy who got like destroyed and launched like a million fix of non- people going like, damn, Nanami you big <laughs> yeah and, damn i didn't know i needed anatomy like that. <laughs> i didn't know i needed anatomy so bad until i saw him destroy this man that is his claim to fame that is the only thing as far as i'm concerned is his claim to fame uh we get back and now we have the flashback of ghetto with his commanders uh they are having a falling out uh the two girls want to basically kill the dude uh, possessing ghetto's body Kijaku and the other two are like eh, it's close enough I mean he's technically doing what Ghetto would have wanted I think they're we're fine and so they end up uh it looks like they're gonna have a fight at each other but then one of the big dudes with his voice is like don't we're gonna all part ways and then later on we'll meet each other and we'll have a meal together we all know this isn't true because two of these girls are fucking dead 
Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Real, real. A lot of people saying we should actually. That might be a calling card. That your time is up. Is that you say we should have a meal together? You're not living through the arc. If you, at any point you said that to someone. <laughs> Anyway, back to the present. Um, uh, Manami states to um, Panda and uh, Kusakabe to surrender because we are inheriting Ghetto's. Uh, Kenjaku inherited Ghetto's will and we're going to take you down, you bunch of monkeys. Um, Kusakabe previously said, hey, we should have a discussion, but he's kind of sad that the, every, they're basically done talking, so he's going to try and figure out like how quickly can I take down this group, but then none of that matters. Because a fight is breaking out, and we see the fight between um, Sukuna and uh, Jogo is breaking out and going crazy. Uh, all throughout the city, there's just a bunch of fire shit going on as these two are just like literally going at it. I don't know if it's at this point, but I think at this... Uh, Kusakabe makes a very salient point. There are elephants dancing around insects. We need to get the fuck out of here. We need to go. He, he wants out so bad. He's He wants bad. He wants out so bad, and he's so correct. <laughs> These people should not be fighting. They should be running. Uh, but yeah, Drogo and Sukuna are fighting each other. With Sukuna kind of saying, like, hey, you should be uh, keep going at me. Come on, man. Be stronger. You need to make me feel like I want to be entertained. Keep fighting. So Jogo's trying his best. He's unleashing a buttload of fire. Uh, at one point, he starts to... He's blocking everything. He's doing all that. And um, Jogo decides that he's just going to f- say fuck it and throw a giant meteor at everyone. And right when it looks like uh, we cut back to Kusakabe, who's like ready to run away... Um, <laughs> Uh, Sukuna shows up in front of him and says like he tells him all to stop by just having his mere presence be there and he goes like alright no human all humans die if less I tell him to move like he's basically giving him like nobody moves until I say so and if they do move they're dead um so he starts counting down and finally when he cuts down to 10 he cuts down to make sure to make it so that the meteor might hit them and they might have a slight chance of escaping it so he finally lets it go and they all fucking book it immediately because they're terrified it's also really funny because panda's mouth was open and he refuses to uh keep the jaw the the he doesn't even close his mouth he's that terrified about being just killed by sukuna because he's just that frightening uh, he shoots the meteor and go, uh, Jogo thinks he's won because he says if that hit, it would have killed him. And Sukuna agrees with him. If it had hit him, it would have killed him, but it didn't hit him. So, haha, take that, <laughs> motherfucker. Uh, so then he says, okay, you know what? We're going to fight each other. I'm going to fight you at your elements. And Sukuna says he's going to start using fire. So Sukuna and uh, Jogo go to have a fire off. And at this point, the anime gets like super cinematic as they do like the closed windows like it's a movie and they're both facing off with each other and as the flames right before they're about to shoot off of each other we go to the white room because that's right jogo has died <laughs> he yeah <laughs> he gets sent straight to the white room to go talk to his friends for a bit um as his friends as he starts talking to me he goes like oh man i guess that's it huh um he says, you know what, no matter what, if we're going to be cursed, I hope that we can come back and I'll reunite with you guys again. And then the others try and cheer him up because, like, hey, at least you have, um, at least there's the other one. And he's the strongest of us, right? Because he's death, so it should be fine. Uh, he goes, like, yeah, it should be fine. And then Sukuna makes his way into his, like, dream death state and he starts talking to him. And this is where he drops the line. Where uh, Jogo basically, he realizes that what Jogo wanted was to be not human, but he wanted to be where the humans were. And that kind of just confused. He's like, I understand you, but it still seems stupid to me. Because, you know, all they do is like band together. And that just is bad. You should just be solo and be strong like me. And in his final moments, he tells him, uh, stand proud, you're strong. And we have the classic Mogo moment where he's crying. He says, what is this? And we cut back to his body, which has been charbroiled and b- buried alive. He is uh, 100% fucking dead. And then we have Rame. She shows up to greet Sukuna, and Sukuna is surprised to see her. And then... Um... <laughs> 
we cut back the episode is ending and as we cut back we see an unknown creature get to shigurama as he goes like hey wake up asshole what did you do and megumi is just like what looks like to be dead (laughs) on the side and that's where the episode ends and that was episode 40 thunderclap zen how do you feel about this a lot of stuff happened here a lot of stuff happens um it's a good episode Mm. i really like it um sukuna versus jogo is extremely cool it is it's very high up the coolness scale um some of the like the the anime obviously expanded on the fight a lot um Mm. it's not just like the manga fight one for one uh the bit where he uh, is like looking around trying to find Sukuna in the sky and he's like where the fuck is he and then he like jump scare flies in from off screen <laughs> it's really good um, that shit is amazing uh, I really like when he's like running through the building and he kicks him up in the air and shit uh, when Jogo tries to crush him with the two buildings and he splits him in half with the cleave uh, yeah. super cool all, all of the fight scene is really cool but my favorite part is still the rabbits who try to throw hands with Toji, who try oh, to like so bust good. it down on Toji. There's the so many that, good bits. The in one this that place. does the martial arts kicks, like at Toji's face, it's so <laughs> good. I fucking love him. That's it's, my guy right there. He is. Oh, it's so so fucking good. It's really nice. Like the the fact that this had this episode has two fights in it that are just like fucking banger is amazing. <laughs> Yes. You can understand why. Also, you can understand why those animators are just were wanted to go like, fuck it, I want to leave. Because <laughs> I would leave yeah, if this the was... The animators were like, I, I wish to perish. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because this seems insane to go for these two fights. Like, these two fights combined would be a single episode for another anime. Like, there would be like two separate fights that you would dedicate time to, but these are two episodes that are half and half in one. It's kind of crazy to me. And yeah, they're both insane. The animation, beautiful, wonderful. So many shots. Sukuna has never looked as menacing as he is as in Yuji's body. Yeah, he's so cool in this whole arc. He is. Sukuna Yuji just has that, uh, he's got that aura, bro. He does. Everyone's been talking about it a lot. A lot of people saying, you know, did he lose his aura when he went into uh, Megumi's body? And the answer is, of course, yes, he did. Yes, he sure fucking did. <laughs> he did. It's unfortunate. He, maybe, he sure did. maybe the anime will make it different, making the... <laughs> maybe the anime will fix it a little bit. But goddamn, it's hard to look at this stuff and go like, damn, I really do miss when he was in Yuji's body. It's just so amazing and so good. Um... The shot of him when he's going through the buildings and he's just standing there like fucking Christ and he does a fucking jump scare. It's so good. It's so good when he flies in. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's amazing. And the line he gives here to Jogo is so s- strong that it's the opposite of nah, I'd win. My brother stopped me and said, hey, what's up with this? He was curious about it. That's how strong he was. He doesn't give a shit about Jujutsu Kaisen, but he still wanted to know the origins of where this came from. That's that's the aura, man. Oh, it's crazy. He's it so is. cool. It's so good. Yeah, and oh, there's just not enough time in the world to say how good this is. Just like every single beat by it. It's so, and it's also really nice because it's actually like a double four of keeping track of Megumi with his fight with him trying to like go down with trying to throw down with his dad and then the other half is yuji and technically that is De- yuji's body but i would consider it still yuji because it's stuck in a stuck in a yuji form if we're gonna if there's goku mid this would be stuck in a yuji <laughs> <to me. laughs> that's what it is yep yeah. and both fights are amazing and the good thing th- so i was making fun of him saying like oh yeah the detective from pokemon but he, i think he does a really fucking good job of selling you about how dangerous it is that these two are fighting. Just the idea of just like, no, man, I don't think you understand how unbelievably unclassed fucked we are. We need to go. We need to stop whatever this stupid shit, whatever stupid beef you got with me right now. None of that matters. We need to go leave. What are we doing? (laughs) This is so stupid. We're going to die. Uh, fantastic stuff. Great episode. And yeah, 
Let's go on because there's still more to go through. Is there anything so else? So much there? more to go through. No, we, we can move on. There's so many good fights coming that it if is. we spend too long and any of them, we'll be here all night. Yeah, it's true. We will, we will be. And we've been going on for a long time recording. But let's go on to Thunderclap Part 2. So the cool thing about this episode is that the OP doesn't actually play. Um, it actually has a weirdly like kind of like cinematic feel to it which shows that you don't need to make an anime movie <laughs> to have a cinematic mm-hmm. feel in your you episodes sure yeah. you know maybe it's best to you not you know not adapt actual arcs looking at you every single one of you including my hero who just thing ever yeah yeah including you my hero. I, I, I i'm running i'm doing the running bit here of, of spoiling my hero when we said no spoilers <laughs> we're doing spoilers for Jesus, the guy said. but it's still super whack to me that an important fucking plot point was told in a fucking anime movie it was never put yeah. in the manga yeah it's very unfortunate it is very bad but anyway let's go on to something very good episode 41 thunderclap um uh, so, in a flashback, Yuji is remembering with his grandfather, and he's asking him, his grandfather is saying that you need to help others. Uh, in the present, uh, Sukuna is in Yuji's body, and he looks over the kind of, like, destroyed remains of Shibuya while standing on top of Jogo and his meteor. Um, we cut back to um, uh, Shuga, Shugama and uh, Megumi, and... Um, as Megami starts talking about, like, hey, here's how Ten Shadows kind of worked. It's like this, in order, you know, the subjugation, I have to start with the two dogs, and then we move on from there. And the other guy's kind of going like, eh, you know, you're you're dying here, but I at least, because you're dying, but you're keeping your guard up, so it's actually very hard for me to approach you, but it's okay, because you're bleeding out, so it's not going to matter. Um, and they see in the distance the fight that's going on. Um, and then Megumi reveals that what he's been doing this entire time was that he was summoning a Shikigami because the way that they subjugate Shikigamis is that technically you can do it in a group. You can do it by yourself, but it's also possible to do it in a group and do it like a ritual. Um, and Gojo, and then we cut to a flashback of him and Gojo talking and Gojo says, do you know why the Gojo clan and the Zeni clan don't like each other? And Megumi says like, I don't know why. Um, and he says the reason is, is that a long time ago there was a fight and it ended with both of our clan dudes dying. And do you see what I see here? And I think it's to imply, I think Megami takes it as like, you can be as strong as me. What Megami actually takes it as, is that, uh, there is a Shikigami that no one in this entire family has ever been able to, um... (laughs) Uh, subjugate and he assumes the reason that those two died is that they tried and they died so now his new uh, plan of action is that he's gonna summon this thing and then they're both gonna die and that's what he does and he summons for um uh shit what is the name of this thing again maharaga maharaga my bad Ma- it's gonna be very important you should always remember the name maharaga uh, i get it confused yeah. with the persona spell that's why the <laughs> mahama <laughs> I keep I keep getting it confused with Maraha, Marahama. That's why I'm like I'm never able to say Maharaga. But anyway, he realizes is like, okay, you know what? I'm dying. I'm summoning this thing, and then he basically says, "Hey, guy, uh, I summoned this thing. We're both dead. I'm going out first. See ya." And then he gets taken out by Maharaga. And the other yeah, he, guy, he doesn't just get taken out. He gets fucking pieced. He does. And then the other guy he goes like, "Sent to the sun." <laughs> And it's really funny because the shitty dude is just like, "Ah, you son of a bitch. This sucks so much. Um, Because he summoned it, Sukuna has just realized what he's done. He just feels like a huge wave of cursed energy. And he was talking to Arama and he tells her to like, hey, yo, get my prepared stuff. I need to go check on something. It seems like this dumbass is about to kill himself. So (laughs) I feel like this idiot might be killing himself right now. Yeah. Hold on. Sukuna has made it very clear that he wants to keep Megami alive. So he has to go check on what's going on here because it seems like he's summoned some bullshit here. So when they actually do the summoning thing, it's real cool because they have like the divine dogs and the toads everywhere. I forgot to mention that part, but it's really cool. Um, so uh, Shigemo is like, fuck, I'm so dead. I'm so dead. I'm so dead. He gets saved by 
um, Sukuna of all people, and the reason is, is that they reveal that he has an innate technique called miracles, and the miracles are kind of like, he erases his memories of tiny miracles in his daily life, and then stores it in the markings under his eyes, and then those are released during critical situations that could save his life. Um, and basically he loses, uh, he lost all of the miracles when he was confronted by Nanami, but we don't learn that until later. But we assume that he loses them right here, because Sukuna saves his life, and Sukuna realizes that uh, he did the right thing. Because Megami is, like, in this weird... He's, like, unconscious. He's dead. But he's also not dead because the ritual's not over yet. Um, and it would have caused him to die if this guy had died. Then both of them would officially be dead. So he heals him up. And he basically says, like, hey, watch yourself. Don't die. I'm gonna go beat the shit out of Maharaga. Uh, and that's what happens as Maharaga and Sukuna start fighting the shit out of each other. And as this goes on, this fight is going crazy um they're attacking each other with everything they have maharaga hits him with something called the sword of extermination which sukuna says like if he had been a cursed spirit that would have just basically been it for him it would have been an insta kill but because he's in yuji's body he's fine um they start fighting each other they do like hand-to-hand -hand combat stuff they do the thing where it's like someone's doing the <laughs> fist of the north star multiple fists at the same time uh, but it's okay, he's like at every step countering it, <laughs> and they're destroying buildings, everything's going apart. Um, Sukuna keeps like attacking Maharaga, but it's not like killing him. Like he's cutting off his finger, he's doing all this, but he's able to keep regenerating and keep fighting. Um, there's also like a wheel behind Maharaga's head, and it starts turning. Um, like at some point he goes to slash his head off, head, head off. And then his head comes back, and that's when you kind of see the wheel is making noises when he's doing that. But anyway, the two continue to fight each other over the entire battlefield. And at this point, um, as they're like they're fighting through buildings, and Sukuna's just killing the shit out of people because they're fighting in front of people, and they don't give a fuck if they kill a bunch of people. So he's killing a bunch of people while he's doing all this. Um, the buildings are falling over each other, and it's just... In insanity as everything kind of goes around it um eventually um they realize that Sukuna realizes that there's something going on with Maharaga and he needs to stop his ability to adapt like he infers that Maharaga has an ability to adapt to all everything which is probably why it's he's never been beaten before because it's probably very unlikely that you could actually beat this thing at least in a fair fight um so then he activates malevolent Shri malevolent shrine which is his domain expansion um malevolent shrine uh does not create a separate space from the innate domain and encloses it in a barrier instead it manifests sukuna's, uh, sukuna's innate domain without a barrier which is kind of like they say it's like painting directly on air <laughs> instead of on canvas uh it's literally like a divine they make it very clear like the yo this is like the, sh the shit you see gods do it should not be possible <laughs> what he's doing here uh he's gonna start usually his domain is 200 meters but because of megumi's health he keeps it to 140 meters instead uh and he makes sure that it's above ground as well uh, and he starts, he, like, unleashes, like, an endless series of flat slashes that reduces everything into it to basically dust. It's, like, the animation here for it, it kind of feels like the world itself is tearing apart over the pure destruction that's going on here. Like, they show actual people as they go, like, we're gonna be okay, right? And then, like, literally gone, destroyed to pieces just just devastatedly destroyed um and as sukuna starts uh funny enough maharaga is actually able to withstand all the slashes um but before maharaga can regenerate sukuna, sukuna finishes him with uh the flaming arrow that he used to exercise jogo um he he had assumed that he had already had like he already adapted to his slashing so the best way he could do it was kind of just quickly hit him up with something else and that ends the battle and that ends the ritual 
Uh, we cut back to Yuji, who is staring at something, and then we cut back to Maharaga's wheel, which is on the ground, and it dissolves into a bunch of liquids. Uh, Sukuna walks past uh, Shigemo, who is like, he's just seen all this shit happen in front of him, and he's just like, holy shit, this is unbelievable. Um, he tells him to get lost, and he goes, oh boy, another win for Shigemo as I survive another <laughs> varying adventure, and then he dies. Uh, and then that's when they reveal actually all his luck was ran out with against Nanami, so he is fuck, he's dead, <laughs> he's gone. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't I mean, have the way that his the way that his technique works is that he has like he stores up miracles, so like every yeah. time something happens, that's like. It's the the explanation's funny too because they're like, every time he sees eleven eleven on a clock, he gets a, a miracle stored up. Yeah, um, that's pretty funny. And then he he used up all of them against Nanami. He's completely it's, tapped out. He's completely tapped out. He's just gone. Um, Sukuna takes Megami to where Shoko and uh, Yaga are, the principal. And the principal makes a very quick note. He's like, Ah, uh, I think that was Yuji. That was not Yuji. That was Sukuna. <laughs> That's very bad. Uh, Sukuna then says, like, he goes back to the destruction and he goes to Yushi and he says, hey, 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 hey. check this shit out. And he switches with Yushi and Yushi regains his body and he immediately recalls all the fucking people that Sukuna killed in his body. And he vomits and he is starts panicking and he's screaming and he's like tearing his fingers apart at the bottom as he's, like, screaming out Sukuna's name, going, like, oh, you bastard. He's, like, screaming to the heavens. Um, and then he wakes up, and he kind of goes into, like, this, like, kind of dead-eyed stare as a cold focus. As he kind of goes, like, I have to keep fighting. I need to help whoever I can. Because if I don't, then I'm nothing but a murderer. And um, the episode ends, and this is when they play the OP and the OP is played over creditless over all the destruction that Sukuna did in Yuji's body. Just all of it. The aftermath of everything that was there. It shows you everything. It's really, really fucking well done. They show the crater that he left behind. And they show you from the top view the lights of Sh uh, Shibuya as like all the lights around it. And then just in the middle of it, it's just gone. Just gone. Yeah, dead. just like absolutely a crater. Absolutely. It is gone. It's just fucking gone. Uh, and the episode ends. It plays the ED. And after the ED, oh, my boy. my They show my boy Nanami who is missing an eye. And he is badly burned. And he is walking through the Shibuya station. And that is where the, the episode ends. So first things first, this episode did get, I think, a lot of flack for the animation. <laughs> uh, well, it people really like the animation of uh, Sukuna versus Maharaga. The reason it got a lot of flack was that the animators came out and said that it was about 30% complete mm -hmm. when released. Yeah. Which, I think they've then gone back and walked that back a little bit. I think one of the an the animator who specifically said 30% said it was maybe a little bit more than 30%. Um, it's still really well done. I think the, the parts where probably it looks a little bit unfinished is maybe some of the background shots. But for the actual fights itself, like the a lot of the, the, the examples I saw people saying, like, damn, like, look at Mahara Maharaga, and out of context, I could see someone being confused and saying, like, oh, that's not finished. But when you're watching the episode, that's on purpose. Because, again, when he uses Malevolent Shrine, it looks like the world itself is, like, ceasing to function because of what he's doing. And it creates, Yeah, like, well, I think that when people look at the 30% number, yeah. they, they look at it, like, in a vacuum, and they're like, oh, everything in the episode could be improved by 70%, which is like not, no, not what that means. It, no. it would just mean that, you know, that, that, that 30% of what they wanted was in there. And even, even like you said, it might be a little bit more than that, uh, that, than what it ended up being. But yeah, it's not the, not the same thing as saying it's 30% done to say that like everything is 70% not done. Like, no, that's no, it no. It, it's a little bit more nuanced than that. Uh, there's definitely just some things where you could look at and say, like, ah, that could be a little bit better. But in terms of the animation, it is uh, intense quality. It is very good and is very well done. 
Um, and the episode itself, I think, is really good. Um, the... The Yuji breakdown is intense because Yuji is such a good boy. Yes. And you just feel the the pain that he has. And you can kind of also understand. They do a real good job of selling it when they show just, like, what's even left. Like, everything that's gone. And they even replay back of, like, saying, like, this. the only thing Yuji is here to do is to help people. And now he's having the conscience of faith that Megami explained to him what happens when the person you save ends up killing people. Which is, this is the thing that he was talking about, that this was inevitable. This was always going to happen. As long as Sukuno had control of his body, eventually he was going to go on a crazy-ass killing spree. It was only a matter of time. Yeah. And we've reached that point. And he's become... This is, like, the start. The bad thing is, is like, this would be the worst thing to happen to a regular shonen hero in any arc. This is just the start for him. Yeah, yeah, it gets uh, it gets worse. It does not get any better for him. <laughs> it but... gets worse. I thought it was really good. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, yeah, great episode. Tsukuna Maharaga, awesome fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, we finally got to see the culmination of uh, Kill Yourself Jutsu. Yes. Uh, which was really cool. Love it. Um, all of it, all of it great. All of it great. <laughs> it re- the funny thing is, is that even though... He the 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 reason a lot of people make fun of him is because he always wants to do it, which is not what he should be doing. When he first did this, I thought, oh, that's a really smart thing to actually do. <laughs> if you know you're just gonna lose, say fuck it, we're both going down. I think is very funny. Uh, the fact that he wanted to do this to basically almost everyone, and a lot of people have gone back and said like he wanted to summon him right here. It's like really, like I think people even said like back to the first episode he was thinking about it. Well, yeah, he was gonna do it against um. Sukuna in the when he first came out yep. like two fingers he was like well <laughs> guess I gotta go time to go goodbye <laughs> my <laughs> final message yeah my final message you really want to just fucking log out of there it's really funny um it's maybe <laughs> it's really funny that it's so that it I love that some of obviously there's a lot of weirdness in the Jujutsu guys in larger community but then you get stuff like this where it's just like, yeah, maybe he just really wants to fucking die at any given hat. And then we've run into that and going like, no, he's just worthy to die in any fight, <laughs> in any situation. And it's pretty funny. It's really good. Yeah, and Maharaga ends up being pretty important later on. So it's a good thing to kind of remember his abilities now. Because trust me, at some point you're going to be going, how good is this motherfucker's ability to adapt, actually? Because <laughs> he <Yep>. seems... <laughs> it's going to be very important going forward um how good he is at it so anyway really good episode we can move on to the next one and go into episode 42 unless you have anything else to specifically say nope okay let me take a quick swig of water because it's time to say goodbye to my boys then yeah it's uh it's that time i'm afraid yep Episode 42, Right and Wrong. So, we begin uh, with a quick look back at Yuji as he is um, still grieving. And then we cut to Nanami, who is uh, fighting still. He's having, like, this inner... In his mind, he is in a beach. Uh, I believe they say, where is the beach going to be? He says, where... The specific beach it would be. But he's like slowly walking through the station and he's walking through it. He's like in his mind imagining himself at this beach. Uh, this tropical beach. And he himself is clearly close to dying. Um, uh, as we, he's like, as he's like slowly walking, th- walking through the hallways, we see Mahito is inside one of the photo booths. But he doesn't see him at this point, which you can you can't blame him. One of his fucking eyes is just gone. <laughs> Don't even though Mahito was directly in front of one of his eye socket, he's going through a lot right now. Just let the man <laughs> daydream. Um, he descends down the stairs and he sees like a bunch of the transfigured humans. And Nanami starts to daydream about Malaysia. 
Uh, he says he wishes he could have built a house and, you know, just lived on the beach, read a bunch of books uh, that he never got to finish. Um, but then he remembers that he has to go save Megami and he hopes that Maki and uh, Nobita are okay. Um, and then he, he says himself that he's very tired. Um, and he goes to fight and he starts fighting all the transfigured humans. Um, as he's fighting, he is having flashbacks back to the beach where he's like happy and enjoying himself. Um, and he's just like cutting through them all, like fighting all of them. Like they try and like, they're, they're like hitting him in the back and he's dropping his weapon, but he's immediately picking him up and he's going to go fight them. Um, and he keeps fighting, he keeps fighting and he keeps going, even though he, he himself says he's tired. He doesn't want to keep fighting. But that's the only thing he can do, so he keeps fighting. Um, and as he gets to the last of them, he sees a hand touch his back. And he realizes that it's Mahito. And he goes, ah. Oh. And he, Mahito tells him, like, hey, um, I was here the entire time. So you really didn't have any chance. Do you have any last words? He said, Mahito says, we've really been, ha <laughs> we've really fought each other a whole bunch. You got anything to say? Um, and right at that moment, Yuji arrives. At this point, I think he was running towards it because he heard that people were fighting. And he, when he runs there, he sees that, um, he sees him in the state that he's in. He also sees that Mahito has him from the back. And that's just basically an instant death sentence because Mahito can kill with just touching you once. Um... He's as Yuji starts to call to Nanami, he debates about whether to say something to him. And he starts talking with uh Yu Habari, who is the kid from the sorcerer who died from back in the uh the Gojo arc. The The JJK what, uh what's it called? Yeah, it wasn't like uh, Secret Storm Plasma Inv Vessel. Yes, that right. guy. The the one that was like really young and gung ho and he died. Uh he starts talking to him. Um he starts to wonder himself why he became a sorcerer. Like he says, like I was able to leave and then I came back for some stupid reason. So like why did what was anything worthwhile? Was did you have to die for this? Why just why? He's like talking to him saying, like, why did this have to go? Um and so, as he's talking to Habari, he said, he, like, Habari's, like, looking back, and he's like, I can't say that to Yuji, because that all it will do will, will curse him. Um, at that point, uh, Mahito realizes that Yuji's behind him. Uh, and then Habari continues to point to him, uh, continues to point at Yuji. And then in his last, last moments, Nanami finally says, okay, I'll do it. He looks back, he smiles, and he says, uh, it's up to you now. And he just fucking dies. His top half completely explodes. And it's like bodies everywhere, and he does it right in front of Yuji. And Yuji is really fucking pissed. And he goes to go fight Mahito. Um... And Mahito's fucking Mahito, so of course it doesn't look like any of this is actually hurting him, even though he's getting his ass kicked for the entirety of the fight. Um, he uses a bunch of his soul multi uh, multiplicities to kind of fuck with him. At this point, he realizes that he probably can't actually beat Yuji if it's a regular one-on-one -on -one fight, but if he can just mentally destroy him, that will be enough to kill his soul, basically, and that will be enough to just beat him. Uh, so he uses stuff like he makes a giant wall and it says help him and he's not able to hit it himself but um, he explodes it in front of him. He starts like throwing out these like really weird curse spirits like the ba like the giant like the giant mouth ones uh, as they're fighting each other. Um, he keeps using um, keeps using all the curse spirits against them. Uh, when he tries to fight him regularly, like, uh, Yuji just beats the shit out of him pretty easily. <laughs> he, like, kicks him in the face and he gives him the ass beating that he deserves. Um, and then, so eventually he realizes, you know what, what I should do is actually just keep throwing Cursor Humans at him, because he actually is very 
stupid and he will fall for it for every single time he sees a person that he can help and he's 100 percent right because as they kind of break apart from fighting each other um he sees two humans and he immediately assumes that the humans are not cursed <laughs> are not the cursed objects that mahito always has and he goes like oh you guys need to get out of here quickly and he immediately gets like sucker punched by one of them because mahito was inside of him and he's like okay this is you're very stupid <laughs> that you can just keep falling <laughs> for this um as they start fighting, um, they Mayudo says, "Okay, let's go. I'm ready for round two. Uh, they start fighting each other. He turns he turns like one of his hands into a gun and he starts shooting him. <laughs> there's a lot of action as they go between each other. Uh, there's like an elevator where they go up it and they go down it and they're fighting each other and they're still doing all that. Um, the innocent civilians and then. As it looks like Yuji um, is angry enough that he could potentially win, um, that's when he realizes, like, I still have one more ace up my sleeve. And then they cut to 9.30 p.m., which is two hours before the Shibuya station, where Dagon consumed a bunch of um, civilians. And they showed that at that moment, um, when they were going to go look for Yuji, he turned himself into two. Um, he split himself into two and, um, blocked off his competition. Um, and now his other self runs into no uh, Nobara in the alley. And she recognizes him and says, hey, you're that asshole who keeps messing with my friend. Uh, also, you're a coward and you're a piece of shit. I can't wait to fight you. And so they start fighting each other. And... Uh... It looks like it's the classic thing of Mahito where, like, even though she uses very clever uh, cursed energy stuff, it doesn't matter because it can't actually hurt him. He goes like, eh, she's not bad, but whatever. What I'm going to do is, is that I'm just going to put her in front of Yuji and I'm just going to fucking kill her and that's going to destroy his soul. And that's where the episode ends. So you go. That's episode yeah. 42. Right and wrong. How do you feel, Zen? Yeah, this is a rough one. Uh, Nanami's death, very sad. Very very painful. Yeah. Uh, the, the fight with Yuji, pretty good. Um, yeah, it is. Yuji fights are always good. The Mahito fights are also always good. So whenever they fight each other, it's really good. Um, boy, does that opening sequence really hurt. It does. Quite a bit. Ah, oh, man. It really, it really does hurt. It really sucks. I remember when I was reading this, and I was just like, "Oh, come on, he's still good." He, can, I'm like, I was like Homer with the when <laughs> Lisa launched the pig into the air. It's like whatever. He's got one eye. He's still good. He's yeah, hammered. He's, he's still he's good. Fine. He's fine. Look at him. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> he, he can survive this, right? And then the answer is no. He ain't. He ain't living through this. Yeah. No, he's just gone, and it really sucks. Um. It hurts. It definitely hurts a whole bunch. It, uh, at this point, I've made my peace with his death, at least. Uh, I remember it was a real fucked feeling. I remember that when I was looking forward to Shibuya being um, animated, I remember going, oh, fuck. I'm gonna have to re-experience this again. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, like, this moment is so big to me. The fight between, even if it's well done between Yuji and Mahito, it's noise to me. It literally just feels like, man, I cannot get over <laughs> the not me yeah, fucking dying. Yeah, you're really, you're really caught up in the the pain of the opening through most of it. Yeah. So even though the the fight is cool and they're doing all this, I remember going like, oh man. The only thing I'm feeling at this point is I want Mahito to fucking die, and that is the continuous feeling as we get through all these episodes. Is I can't wait to see Mahito fucking die. Like I've wanted this man dead since his debut. <laughs> Yeah, he's a real fucker. Yeah, I really, he's such a good villain though. Like he's, he is he's so good at making you fucking hate him. And the thing is, is that the reason I know that he's a good villain is that I want to discredit him, and I know that it's bullshit. Like everything mm -hmm. I want to say that is negative about him, I know it's bullshit. I still want to say it, but that's because I don't like him. Yeah, because because you hate him. Like you yes, want him to, to suffer. But... That that is the sis, that's when you know a villain has gotten under your skin. Is that you literally cannot... <laughs> you want to trash talk him even though you know you're full of shit. Yeah. 
Uh-huh. And you're wrong. Like, when he pulls out the fucking school shooter to mess with Yuji, and his reaction yeah. is, is that, hey, you need to really stop reacting like this. It's such a, oh, I fucking hate you. I fucking hate him so much. He's, oh, he's the worst. Absolute worst. Like, in every single, because th- there's, like, multiple layers to how bad he is to fight. Because it's not, it's bad enough that... In one single touch is enough to just mean that he's dead. He's immune to basically everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. Very few people can actively attack the soul, and it ends up being that really Yuji is his main counterforce. And later on, we learn there is other ways to kind of hurt him that someone figured out. If you know his gimmick, but if you don't know his gimmick and you're fighting him blind, it's almost impossible to actually beat him. Uh, when he's fighting you, he taunts you and he hits you with like the bunch. It's kind of like when. You know how it feels like? This must have been like what Kaiba felt like when he got two eyes, two eyes, blue, blue eyes, tune dragon against oh, him. Oh, blue eyes, tune dragon, yeah. Where he's when like, he got the, the fuck around. Yeah, where he's like, I'm getting cooked and this thing is fucking like throwing a volcano on his armpits to show how strong he is. This is insulting. <laughs> this is bad enough that I am losing, but I am losing in the most like, <laughs> like way possible. It's yeah, a very like, nah, 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 kind of way. Yeah. Yes, that makes yeah, it just. I fucking hate him, dude. I hate him so much. Oh, I do. I absolutely do. We have well animated fights. Excellent final moments for Nanami. I was glad to. I think, uh, I think Anonymous like final arc here is very well done and very respectful in the way that not in the fact that he dies, but in the way that he gets at least a clear death, where he has a moment, he knows what to do, and we see it, and it gets played through, and that's the end of Anonymy. There's no false hope here. Now, with that no. said, Zen, let's go on to the next episode. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about some fucking false hope. Episode 43, which should just be called False Hope, but it's called Right and Wrong Part 2. All right. Right and Wrong Part 2. So, they show that at 11.14 p.m., uh, Donami left Nobara and Akari behind. Um, Akari explains to Nobara that they weren't, like, that she can't go out and fight because we're basically out of our leagues here. Um, don't do something reckless. And Nobra says, like, I can't do that. Like, I know Nanami wants to do that, wants me to not fight. But literally, my two idiots are out there fighting. I cannot, I cannot live with myself if I do not do the same. So I'm going out there and I'm fighting. Um, we cut to back to Shibuya and Maito is still doing his classic Mahito things. Like, there's a bunch of innocent civilians, so of course he's going to use them to fuck with Yuji. <laughs> Um, for one of them, when he's going to check if they're okay, he, like, goes, like, I'm okay, and then he blows up in his face as the blood gets in his eyes, um, as he's getting ready to, like, hit him with, like, a spike club as he turns one of his arms into a spike club, going back to my same thing here about, like, getting hit with the two two blue eyes, (laughs) he's about to cartoonishly Uh fucking hit him with a spike club. We cut back to the alley where Maito and Nobara are fighting each other. She understands that uh, I can't let him touch me because of all the stuff that Yuji went through, so she knows that it's dangerous to let him touch him. But she doesn't know that it's a double, and this one can't actually transfigure souls like the main one can. So he tr- she tries to kind of trade blows with him, but it's not working. He's literally like just tanking them and going, like, that doesn't do anything. Just keep going. Keep trying. Um, and he keeps trying to say, like, this is all pointless. Everything you're doing is just, like, dumb. This is just stupid. Stop trying. Um, Maito uh, avoids a projectile nail and she climbs to the side of an alley to a higher platform. And she drops a nail imbued with cursed energy at his feet and detonates it. So all the ones that she was, it looked like she was missing with, it actually wasn't the case. She was actually using them as like a trap so she could activate this. Um, and then she goes back down, and this as she's coming back down to him, Mahi was like, what's going on here? What is she going to do? Um, so she activates a hairpin again, and she uses her cursed energy to propel the nail into his head. Um, like, she, uses, she activates resonance and then hits him on the top of the head, and that is enough to make it so that it will actually hit... Like, so she realizes that this is the double... So if this is the double, she can use it as, like, an effigy. 
So anything that happens to it, that it can, like, attack the soul that way. So even though she hit, hit the copy in the top of the head, it hits the original. And that's enough to make it stop for just a little bit. And that's enough for Yuji to just go fucking ham on him and just start wailing the shit out of him. And Yuji says, oh my god, that's clearly uh, Nobara doing that. Thank you so much. I'm not fighting alone. Let's fucking go. We can do this. Um, and so they start fighting each other. Yuji does a black flash, which is really fucking good as he just like nails him. He does so many black flashes, but every single one of them is sick. Yep. Every it's single one cool of them. Move. Yep. Um, back in the alley, um, now that Nobra kind of has all the kind of tricks to him kind of figured out, um, this the double decides to run away. Um, instead of continuing the fight, like she's really, she's literally like, "All right, let's go, let's fight." And then he goes, "Nah," and he runs away cartoonishly, like whoa, 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 like the Zoidberg to go away. Um, and she chases after him. Um, she has a bad feeling. She says, like, I could just go to B5, but also, uh, I have a bad feeling that if I let this guy run loose, it would be very bad for everyone. Uh, back at the main body, Yuji's still beating the shit out of him. He's wailing him. And he starts running, uh, he starts running away. Uh, and when he breaks apart, like, he breaks apart into a bunch of tiny ones, and he tries to figure out which one has his soul, and one of them gets, he puts a little demonic energy into one of them to trick Yuji, so he crashes that one against the wall, but it's, of course, a dupe, and so Mahito starts running away, um, he assumes that what he's gonna do is that, because there's a double, they're gonna meet up, and he's gonna heal himself, so they start running towards each other, and it looks like that's what's gonna be done, but instead, what's going to be happening is that when they run to go meet each other, they don't form up again. And instead, he starts, he keeps running forward. Uh, Yuji immediately realizes what's going to happen because he sees Nobra and he tries to um, warn her to get the hell out of the way. But it doesn't happen as the warning comes too late and he touches her face just by a little bit. Um, Yuji then kills the double with one shot. And runs over to check on Nobra. Uh, and then Nobra, realizing that this is basically it, has a flashback back to 2009, where we see her as a kid, uh, where she's with Fumi. Uh, Fumi is being picked on because she's not from the shitty hometown that Nobra's in, because apparently everyone in the countryside just really fucking sucks where Nobra grow grows up. Uh, they were gonna, they were bullying Fumi because like everyone was getting black and red backpacks, but she picked the blue, blue one. But Nobara says like, "Hey, switch with me," and then she goes beats the bullies, and then it does a re-switch back, and they become friends. They play like a fake version of Smash Brothers, <laughs> which is really funny <laughs> with uh, Yumi with Fumi's dad. Um, they talk about the woman that was there previously, who was. Uh, they find a secret base, and that's where Sori lives. Um, she was the older woman and she ended up being friends with them and they see that, Sar uh, sorry, am I pronouncing that right? Sorry? Uh, yeah, I think sorry? so. Sorry? Something, something. Sorry. Uh, either way, they start to, they start to see that a lot of the villagers uh, sorry. are- Sorry. I think, I think there's a little bit of O in the middle. But... Sorry. Okay, let's go with that. They see that she's being picked on by the villagers. They're, like, vandalizing her home because, again, uh, the countryside sucks. Um, uh, there's only, like, 15 people living there, and they all apparently suck ass. Uh, so Sari decides that she's going to move out of the village, and she remembers that as they're saying goodbye, uh, Nobra, who at this point was just, like, a super crazy tom girl, was just crying her eyes out, and she was super sad. Like, even as this flashback, she never even says anything like goodbye. It's just nonstop crying from her. Um, eventually, Nobra decides that she's going to transfer over to Tokyo after fighting her grandmother on the decision. Um, and as they're saying, as Fumi is saying goodbye to Nobra, Nobra says, like, hey... Uh, Fumi says, like, I wonder if she's going to cry for me like she did for her back at the end day. We never actually talked about her again, and as Nobra is getting into the train, she starts to cry and says, like, hey, I want to, one day we three will meet back up in the city, and we'll hang out together, and just like it was back then. So get the hell out of this shitty town, and I'll wait for you there. Um, and she's, you can, um, Fumi, as she sees that she's crying, also is, cries and agrees that one day they'll do it in the present day sorry is working in an office 
Uh, it's super late at night, and her co-workers are saying, like, yo, take a break. She decides not to take a break, and she sees that she's got a bunch of stress, and she starts to remember her time back in the countryside. As she's saying that, before she says that, she says, someone mentioned that it looks like there's a terrorist attack going on in Shibuya right now. Um, and then Sari asks her senior if you ever thought about getting married and having kids. And she talks about, like, the two kids that she met while she was in the countryside, and she wonders if they're doing good. Uh, she never told them where they were, and she wonders if they would be disappointed with how her life is now. Uh, we cut back to Nobra, who is holding her face and imagining herself being surrounded by chairs. Um, she thinks everyone at the village was crazy, and then she realizes that not everyone was crazy, but the crazy ones were usually loud. And that made her believe that... Um, that everyone but herself would trample on other people's lives. And that was until she met the other two dudes, which was Yuji and uh, Megami. And so she starts, uh, and Gojo, and she pictures her friends. Uh, she sees them all around her. She turns around and sees Fumi sitting on a chair. And then she imagines a younger Fumi. And then Nobara apologizes to Fumi, saying, I'm sorry, I'm not, it's not looks like I'm not going to be able to do the meeting that I promised you when I left. And then Nobra looks at Yuji, as we cut back to the moment of when she does it, and Nobra looks at Yuji, as Yuji is worried about what's happening here. And as she says, she says in the final things, she says her final words, tell everyone that she had a pretty good, I've had a pretty good life. And then the left side of her face swells up and it bursts due to the idol transfiguration and Yuji watches as Nobra's left eye basically flies out of her head and blood splatters all over his face and that is where the episode ends. <sighs> yes. Ah. Uh, really, really fucking uh, bad, man. Feels real bad. Eh. <laughs> that... <laughs> Feels real bad, man. <laughs> Where the fuck do I start with this? Okay, in terms of the actual episode, I think it's very well done. Um, Nobra basically gets an entire episode to herself, which she should be getting to herself, because this is one of your main characters in the cast. Your only female main character at this point, I should add. Um... And I think that the episode does a really good job of like setting up showing her backstory and kind of showing about why she is the way that she is, but also seeing that she what her actual ambitions of being in the city were and the specific things that they want in life afterwards, which is a running thing between her and Nanami, which is both of them, which is always the tragic thing is that a lot of times in anime, the characters are willing and ready to die for what they believe in. But in Jujutsu Kaisen, when the characters reach their end, their ending isn't that I'm ready to die for this. Their feelings are, I really wanted to live more. I did, like This was not the actual end that I wanted. Nobody wanted this end. And it's just sad. It's just unbelievable. It's like a depressing nature of it. The way she gets taken out, it's so fucking depressing. And I feel like the episode does a good job at, like, delivering home what is an extremely pivotal moment for Jujutsu Kaisen. Because I think, I've had a lot of time to think about this Zen. I think from this point on is where we hit the point of no return for Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah, this, I think this is probably a good point. This is the point where you look at and say, maybe he wasn't cooking. This is the point where you look at and go, maybe he's not the genius I thought he was. Because the way she gets taken out in the next episode, they make it say like, hey, maybe she's not dead. And then, spoilers for the manga, this is the reason why I said there's going to be spoilers for this episode. We are at the final arc, she has not shown up. And as she's far dead. as- Oh yeah, she's totally dead. She's 100% dead. 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 Everyone is understanding she is dead. It is insane to me that she did not get the same send-off as Nanami. I would be a little bit more happy if they had actually given her the Nanami ending of There Was No Hope. But instead, he decided to do this weird thing where, like, hey, maybe she survives to the end. And it's like, 
Every and it's so bizarre because now when you look at the re, the new chapters, the only thing that I can think is if they bring her back at this point is that that after it's all over, she'll be revealed to be like retired or something. Like that's the only thing I. She's totally dead. Her and Toto just hanging out at the retirement office for fucking <laughs> yeah, 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 one eye, one arm, <laughs> hanging out playing I ping pong somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's. <laughs> I'm not saying that there's a chance in here, but at this point, I'm just gone. Because this is the point where I feel like just the handling of her, and this is the part where a lot of the other female characters end up getting the same kind of treatment, where this is your main starring female character. This is one of the few female characters that people praise in shonen anime. Do you know how fucking rare that is? Do you know the- Yeah, it's not common. This man- killed the golden goose it is insane to me that he wrote one of the best female characters and then gave her one of the shittiest send-offs in the world and it only feels that way because it in the current jujutsu kaisen it doesn't feel like he actually has a plan to bring her back in any way that seems significant even in a weird way to say like hey maybe she's doing fine they just don't bring her up they just don't talk about her it's similar to that weird feeling we said when Gojo came out of the prison realm and then his exact feelings were, okay, let's go fight. And his exact feelings weren't how, what happened when I was gone? What happened to Nobara? What happened to all these people? It was, no, we just need to move on. And it's like, what? It's just weird. It's just so weird to make a character this well and then just fucking discard them. <laughs> It's so weird. And I've had a lot to think about this. It's the one sticking point that I always had in the back of my mind about Jujutsu Kaisen is I really want her back. And I assumed because of the way that they wrote it that there was a way to bring her back. And now I've just lost all hope. There's just no hope in me left. And yeah, she's totally not coming back. Uh, it's not happening. No. Um, she's dead for sure. 100%. Which is, is fine. But they said, so they have the guy say she might not be dead. Right. It, yeah. Technically, this is in the next episode. But yeah, this is in the next episode. But we need, um, technically speaking, the thing that makes me angry is in the next episode. But the next episode is really good for some other stuff. So I don't want to put it on yes, this one. We're putting it on angry this one. In that one yeah. Yes. Um. So the guy, the guy says, there, she's not guaranteed to live, but there's a chance that she might be okay. Um. And then she never shows back up. And then in the calling games, Yuji is like. Hey, by the way, whatever happened to Nobra? And Megumi just kind of like looks sad for a minute, and he's like, "Oh," and then they just stop. That that's it. Like they don't they don't talk about it anymore. Um. Yep. Nope. Which nope. is insane mm. to me. That there, there's not like, and you know, there's that little bit where Yuji's like, "Oh, there's a new girl on the team," and I I instinctively didn't like her because I didn't want to risk her you know, taking Nobra's place with you and me or something, um, which I guess was or whatever. It it just feels really bad, man. To like feels really have bad. this character and then they're like, Well so much for that. <laughs> we're 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 done. Yeah. With her forever, bait like almost immediately. Yeah. And the way I feel about it is not that they shouldn't kill her because she's the only like female representative. That's not what I feel. Because another manga does something very similar. And I'm keeping this vague because I don't want to spoil that. But you know what I'm talking about. Where a female main cast member goes away, but they at least do the due diligence to make it seem very clear to you, she is dead. She's not coming back. There's no happy. There's no hope. You're going to have to live with this. And I'm fine with that. I don't like the the leaving things in to be because it definitely feels like a lazy way of saying of like earning happy points at the end. Because this manga is for the most part extremely bleak. So I could see a thing of like at the end of it after like they fucking send Sukuna to jail for his crimes or whatever the fuck. And Jujutsu jail, yeah. They, 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 the allegations stick, and he goes to Jujutsu jail. And they have a quick shot of Nobra, and she's got she's all bandaged up, and she's hanging out with her friends, and it's like, oh, that's nice that she's there. But at the same time, that's not the way I would have wanted to see the character return. It's specifically because of the way they make it seem, and she is a fighter. She even says in this episode, I can't stand back while my friends are fighting. That would mean to me that if she were still alive, she would not 
even if she was in the state that she was in, she would figure out a way to at least be there. It would make no sense to me. It would just make me angry at that point. It's like, it would have been better if you just committed. Like, full full sale. Kill her off. It's fine. It's, I don't know. It's real bad. It, I think it's, yeah, the, it, it's the it, one thing. It's, uh, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Before I, 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 no, I mean, I, I'm trying. I don't even know if I have my thought articulated. But, like, it's just not. It's not the way that I would have wanted any character to go with this hint of, like, are they not? actually are they dead and then when you finally confirm it it's almost like a one-off on a single page and like nobody talks about it anymore because they're busy yeah like we don't we don't even really get anyone's reaction to her death other than yuji's like the only reaction we get of how megami feels about nobra's death is one panel of him looking at the ground that's it yeah and it's just crazy. It's crazy, man. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how you treat like a, a very beloved character that way. Yeah. I, it, and I, I will know. say before we move on that when the news came out that he was inspired by Fate Night Fate Stay Night Zero, which was written by uh, Guro Uro Butcher, aka the Butcher, who is nicknamed that specifically. Because he fucking kills characters with zero <laughs> disregard. And he is a big fan of Zero and he loves it. And that was one of the main inspirations for Jujutsu Kaisen. It hit me like a ton of bricks. It was like me, it was my Kaiser Sose moment. As I pointed to one of my favorite animes and said, It was because of fucking you. I can't have no- <laughs> it. was you. <laughs> As I stare at the saber and I go, You son of a bitch. I understand. You motherfucker. All- I now understand all those Fates fans that said that you were bad for the for the series because look at what you did, <laughs> look at what you did to my girl. So yeah, unfortunate, it's, man. It fucking yeah. sucks, dude. Yeah, it does, and I can't stress this enough. The episode itself is good. It's what happens after the episode that makes it very hard for me to separate my feelings from when I'm watching it. It, yes. Once you know, once the monkey box is open and you see the future, there's no going back to it. Like, I dread the next season, actually. When they eventually get to the stuff like this, and we see everyone's actual live reaction to it, I'm like, yeah, man, this is... It's just not... It just doesn't feel right. Real fucked up, man. <laughs> it does. Fucked up. It is. And yeah, that's episode 43. Can't stress enough. Very good episode. I just needed to get this monkey off my back. <laughs> Because I've been building towards it since we started Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> For Shonen Archive, it needed to be done. It needed to be said. And now let's move on to the next episode. This is where all the good vibes come back. Because thankfully, thank God, he may have he may be not cooking, but he was definitely 100% cooking when he made Toto. <laughs> Alright, yes. let's... Toto was a, a, a exquisite dish. He is 100%. He is here to make everyone feel better. (laughs) He does an amazing job. So let's go to episode 44, Right and Wrong, part 3. Before we go, he's kind of in a daze as he's just seen... uh, Oh man, I forgot that this fucking opens this way. Um, As the bud kind of falls down, I want to say this is where we see the close-up shot of of how her eye looks which is they framed it from actually this is not where it is so it looks like blood and is being spilled and then it actually turns out to be coffee um and on the coffee um they spread it into a shirt that belongs to Gojo, and Nobra tries to blame it off on Ichi. She puts like a little, <laughs> she puts like a little like scale that says like, okay, so on the one scale we have Ichi, who told us to look after the shirt, and then we have me, who ruined the shirt. Now, truly, who is to blame for this? Is it yeah, the it's obviously him? Actually, for trusting me. <laughs> and so they both go like nah that it's your fault um they try and work together to fix it and dab away the stains it doesn't work it actually makes the shirt worse yeah it makes um, it way worse and so nobra says like hey we'll just buy a replacer whatever this is a cheap ass shirt right megami how much does this cost sh- this shirt cost and megami does the very funny thing of taking a picture of it and then looking it up online and he says uh 250 000 yen 
And they both go like, oh my god. And then so Nova says like, okay, so I pitch 80000 and then you guys 90000 and we can afford it. And they go like, why are we paying more than you are? <laughs> 250000 yen, by the way, is uh, $1,800. It's an expensive ass shirt. And right then, Gojo arrives. He's like, hey, you guys got my shirt? Uh, and then they look at Megumi as he sees there's a bulge in Megumi's jacket, and both Nobra and Yuji are just, like, laughing their ass off, um, and they aren't able to hide what they did to Gojo's shirt, and they start to remove the shirt from Megumi's, uh, uniform as they all have, like, a good old, aw, man, such wonderful times, and then we cut to Nobra on the ground with her fucking eye missing, and, like, half her skull, and, um... Yep. Uh, man. And then Yuji starts to just... Uh, he loses it. His spirit is gone. He hyperventilates. He can't fight back. Um, then Mahito hits him with a black flash. Um, which is not something he could do previously, I think. But he hits him with it just to let you know how fucking serious Mahito is to getting his soul kind of, like, fully awakened. Um... And so he just starts beating the shit out of Yuji as he goes to him, basically having his moment of saying, like, what did you think this was? Did you think that you were all going to come in here and have a good old time? No, this is fucking war. I came for a war. You came for a battle. This is the consequences of going in this way. Um, and he also starts, I think he had said it previously, but he told to um, Yuji that they are basically one in the same. Um... And he's kind of hammering this home, like, yeah, I'm, we're the same here. We're murderers. That's what we are. No way you look at it. That's what we are. Um, so he starts beating down Yuji mentally and physically. Um, and he starts to ask him, like, have you ever counted how many exor- uh, curses you exercised? Um, and that's basically just to tell him, like, did you even think about like how many people of my people you killed before coming in here? And just to really just weigh down on him that uh, no nothing that he's not helping anyone all he is is a murderer just like he is um he morphs his hands to like prey mantis claws and he's ready to kill yuji um and he goes like it was fun but i'm gonna forget about you eventually and then we hear a clapping noise and yuji disappears from mahito's view uh and that is when toto who has just used boogie woogie uh, comes in and he delivers his line, which is, uh, uh, let me find the exact thing of it because it is an amazing line. And they actually did it for one for one. I know a lot of people were <laughs> a little bit afraid about what Crunchyroll was going to do with the, with the phrase here, but they got it a hundred percent right. Um, the bells of the Guyon monastery in India, uh, echo with the warning that all things are in permanence. Uh, the blossoms of the salvo trees teach us through their hues uh, that what flourishes must fade, but we are the exception. However, that goes, however, uh, we are the exception, which is a famous line. It is one of the coldest lines ever delivered. <laughs> it is yes. amazing. It, oh, dude. Oh, it's so, so good. good. And I'll say this right now. This motherfucker walks in like he's All Might. And by the end of the episode, there was parts where I was like, this feels like All Might. <laughs> it feels like they... <laughs> this reminds me of like, damn, remember when All Might was <laughs> strong and awesome? <laughs> That's Toto. And unfortunately, you can't have a character like that last very long because they take away the, all the focus from the main character. Yeah. Um, so they go back and they show that uh, Toto and Arata were at the Fukutoshin line where they see that uh, Gojo's box has been moved. So Kinjaku has it and he's kind of moved it away from there. So Toto says, we need to go. This is no longer a rescue Gojo mission. We're kind of fucked. That's out of here. We need to go help people. We need to go save people. We need to go find my brother. Let's go find him. He's obviously fighting out here. I know him. Uh, Arata then says, like, I had no idea that dude had a brother. And when they cut back to the present time, um, they, Arata actually starts treating, um, uh, I forget if he does it right here, right now, but when he looks at Yuji, he goes like, 
you know, for being brothers, they look really different. <laughs> He doesn't yeah, they don't look alike at all, yeah. They don't look alike at all, but he's able to heal up um, Yuji, and he explains to Yuji specifically how his healing technique works, which is basically he stopped him from feeling pain right now. Um, and what I'm going to do is basically, like, what I did to you, I did over to her as well. It feels like she's probably already dead, but it's not a 0% chance. And he just keeps saying that. Hey, you know, keep going. And it's not a 0% chance. I'm going to go take her to heal. I'll see what I can do. Her Half her face was fucking blown off. But you know what? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> well, I'm going to do my best. And he leaves. And uh, Yuji also had a breakdown before this. Where he was talking about how, like, everyone's gone. Everyone's dead. Uh this sucks. I don't know what to do. I can't keep moving on. And Toto's able to get him to kind of snap out of it. Um, where he's saying, like, listen, um, a man as great as you shouldn't let yourself grow so small. You need to be better than this. We're jujutsus. It's not a matter of sin and punishments. We're just here to do this. And he takes off his shirt to reveal a purple shirt, which is important for later when he removes that purple shirt and... <laughs> Takes it off of there. So we then cut back to as he gives this kind of pep talk to Yuji to kind of make him feel better. He says that uh, no Jujutsu sorcerer is actually dead as long as their friends are still with them and continuing on in their presence. And Yuji goes like, wait, that's where I'm kind of getting from when the ending of Nanami and for Nobara, both of them were saying, both of them were kind of just saying like, hey, keep going, like tell others about me, but you know, it's up to you now and stuff like that. So he's starting to understand what he's saying here. And Yuji wakes up and he goes like, okay, you know what? You're right. Let's go beat the shit out of Mahito. And he goes like, brother, yes. And he takes his purple shirt and he removes his purple shirt to rip it off to reveal his huge ass muscles. Yep. <laughs> and he's ready to go fucking fight with his friend. And then finally we cut to... um. I can, is it, what, is, Mai? Is it Mai, the the swordsman girl? Maki? Maki, my bad, Maki. She's talking to Mekamaru as Mekamaru starts to explain, like, hey, I made it so specifically, a lot of our team was on a mission when this mission would start, so that you guys would be safe. Because, like, what about Toto and the, um... Uh, what is, well, I can't believe I'm already forgetting his name. Arada, what about them? He goes like, well, they're not, Toto has like a 99% chance to live, and I'm pretty sure Arada will live as well. But for you guys, it wasn't 100% that you would survive it, so I had to do this. Um, and Mekamaru starts telling her basically like, as she kind of says like, am I weak? And as everyone in the audience knows, the answer is, of course, yes. But yes, he doesn't tell are. her that. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler, yes. The, the unfortunate answer to hear was, Yes, <laughs> unfortunately, she is very weak. Um, but he starts talking about how he had a girl that he loved, and as long as she was safe, that's okay with him. And she starts, say and he starts saying, "Okay, it's time to say goodbye," because basically, all my things, like I'm running on empty here. This is my final message. Um, and she's crying and saying, "Please don't go." And as she holds on to him. He briefly appears in his human form and says, please find happiness. And she starts uh, crying her eyes out. And then we cut to the rest of the team who is like also learning offhand that they were not put on the mission because he was pretty sure they were all going to die. And they're having a moment of Mekumaru is dead, but they're also having a moment of, I can't believe this motherfucker said we were weak. <laughs> that we were just yeah, gonna... I can't believe we're useless. Were we that useless? Do we suck that bad? And... um. Maki's sister then says, whatever, fucking asshole Mekamaru, I'm going to show him what's up because I don't want to see my junior cry like that. I'm going to get back, whatever. And so we cut back to uh, Toto and Yuji fighting, and they are just having a good old ass time as he's using his boogie woogie to just completely fucking uh, dominate on Mahito and keep him off track and they're fighting the shit out of him he is in a state that's pretty bad I think he says like I only have like about 40% of my cursed soul on me because I keep taking black flashes from Yuji <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting fucking hit with a black flash and it's fucking 
fucking me up. Yeah, it's fucking me up pretty bad. I'm pretty sure Yuji's at like maybe 10%. And this gorilla motherfucker's at full. There's nothing stopping his soul. There's just nothing there to stop. And so they're fighting each other. And <laughs> as they're fighting each other, um, Toto's like, damn, my brother's good. But you know what that means? I need to be even fucking sicker. So he tells uh, Yuji to toss a pebble. And as he's tossing the pebble with his cursed energy to do a black flash, we get this sequence, which is can best be explained as like the cursed energy as he goes through space. Toto's like going through space. This is why I'm saying it's like when All Might does his um his punch. Like there's nothing but space in behind him as he's like a giant fucking flying rocket. He has a big ass smile on his face. He's T posing on him. He's shooting it off. And Toto's like, listen, um, we're gonna I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. And he starts having a bunch of flashes to everything that he loves to get this black flash in perfect order. Some of the quick flashes that he sees, he also sees a galaxy of Yuji giving him the thumbs up to let him know that he approves of all the things he's about to do. And <laughs> as he goes for the black flash, which is uh with a kick as well. He's not doing it in a fist, he's doing a kick. This is the most insane kick ever. He has like a bunch of flashbacks to everything he loves. He sees his brother, he sees his idol, he sees big asses. <laughs> everything that makes Toto who he is, he sees in this flashback as he fucking hits him with uh, and then he has like double head he has like his three heads in the air and he kicks him with a black flash and Mahito smiling all the while and they say that um as they're fighting each other at this moment, they're all operating at 120%. And they show the manga panel, which is oh so fucking cool. When they show the mon- the manga panel that is actually from the manga where they say where they say the 120%, and it's like all three of them and uh, <laughs> Toto has a fucking smooch on it. Yeah, it even has the little manga sound effect on it. He it does. It's really good. Oh. Drawing out 120% of their latent power. Yuji looking fucking cold as hell. Mido looking like a fucking creep. And Toto just being that guy. <laughs> in this, yeah, He really is that guy. <laughs> he is. And the fight continues on. And the ending of the fight will be in the next episode. But that is episode 44. Right and wrong. Zen, how do you feel? Banger. Absolute. Banger. Mm. Banger fight. The fucking section. Where Yuji throws the rock and Toto boogie woogies to swap with it, so he's flying as fast as Yuji through the rock, and he's T posing <laughs> at Maito while he's flying through the air at him. It's so fucking good. This series is Dude, so good. <laughs> I love Toto. I love Toto. I love Toto. This is, oh my god. Is there a character that exists better than Toto? I'm not sure. No, not unfortunately, not after they fucking killed my guy. I'm all in the Toto. I'm all in for Toto now. I, uh, he's just so unbelievably cool. I think it's actually to the point where he is a similar vein of Gojo, but he's not Gojo because he's a silly guy. So, no, because Gojo's also silly, but it's like a different kind of like silly menacing. He, he's a Gojo's silly like brand of silliness is like um irre- like a, a reverence, right? Like I don't have to care about anything. Toto's brand of silliness is that he cares about everything so much. Yes, actually. That is the per- <laughs> he is the yin yang. He cares so unbelievably much to the point where um He's able to have these delusions, and the delusions are so powerful. His delusions are so powerful, people assume that Yuji had the power to make people join his side. No, that's just actually what he was like. It's just raw, Toto insanity. Yes. Everything about him just emanates pure fucking cool. To the point where you have people in the current arc going like, Alright, so when Toto's gonna show up, it's like... This, this unfortunately is it for Toto in the next episode. There, There is mm-hmm. no coming back from hand injury, and he gets his hands unbelievably fucked up, and he kind of needs them to do boogie-woogie. So this is unfortunately the end of Toto. And I understand where people are coming from, because when things look their darkest, when you're questioning the story itself, he brings in Toto and everything feels all right. That is what... Yeah, it's it's interesting in that, that Toto is the like used that way, is that he's like 
the guy where you're like, oh fuck, like we we have nothing for this, and then he's like, actually, we have Toto and Yuji. <laughs> Yes. Fighting together. To the point where I'm like, this series should have actually been about Toto and Yuji having weird brother <laughs> adventures. Yes. And what I don't get is, I don't really understand why they can't bring Toto back after he loses his hand. Because even if they can't heal the hand, he's able to use Boogie Woogie by clapping Mahito's hand. So why can't they just have someone else with him with his good hand? Yeah. Like how in My Hero, how, uh, I'm going to spoil some My Hero shit, but Aizawa has the buddy. That yes. lets him use his quirk all the time. Just do that. You should just give... have a guy. Just have a, that guy. That guy that fucking failed to heal Nobra and then vanished forever. <laughs> have him fix it by being Toto's clap buddy. That's all he's there for. Hold his hand out and let Toto clap on it over and over. I was again. gonna say it'd be way funnier if they just brought in the little girl from My Hero and he's just she's just always on his back. So that <laughs> <laughs> so he can... the healing his destroyed arm. Exactly. He's like, I get to have my arms back from here. Um, uh, yeah, I can, there's so many, like, I, I think the understanding is, is that because Maito fucks with the soul, the soul of his hand is dead. Kind of like when Orochimaru sold, sealed away the third Okage's arms to for, forever have battle with them. <laughs> or when the third Okage sealed away Orochimaru's arms so he could forever be in battle with them. Um, it's similar to that where, like, the arms just are useless. And you need basically a new body at that point. That's what I'm assuming. I'm taking a lot of assumptions here. But at the same time, if he just wanted to say, Toto's back, I figured out a way, I would just accept it. He wouldn't even need to give me the whole, like, three-page, like, okay, so back in Antarctica in 1982, this is what happens. Like, whatever, man. All you needed to say was Toto's back. <laughs> you could literally call the chapter Toto's back, actually, and I would be 100% down with it. Yeah, literally, just, yeah. The, the, the final battle, part 48. Toto's back. Toto's back, and he's here to boogie woogie. <laughs> Toto's back, yeah. Because it would be uh, lovely. But yeah, he has like... And it's really funny that he gives him to this, because he doesn't give this to Gojo. He gives him the Goku entrance. Where Goku enters the battle, and everything is okay, because he's Goku. Toto has that same feel, except for instead of Goku, who is the main character, he is a side character who believes that the main character is his brother because his delusions are that strong because they share an innate ability of loving women with big asses. That is mm -hmm. king shit. He is amazing. He's lovely. Like, there's no amount of saying how good he is at what he does and all the things that he's allowed to do in the and the anime does a fantastic job with him like they it's like they were told like here's this character and they said oh we got you fam and they give him like flowers like he gets the fucking like he gets his own op basically in the next episode it's amazing uh and this episode is great when i finished this episode and i told my friend i caught up to jujutsu kaisen he immediately posted the gif of toto fucking t-posing and, like, shooting through space <laughs> to hit with the Black Flash. It's amazing. This is why, when I looked at this sequence, I said, it's a damn shame we are not getting a fighters for Jujutsu Kaisen and instead getting a shitty arena fighter. Yep. Because if you give me a, a game... garbage-ass arena fighter? Yes. If you give me a game where I can do this by using three meters of my bar, I'm there. I'm so fucking I'm maining him day one. I don't give a fuck if, like, he can only fight if his idol meter is at the highest or whatever. I don't care. I will figure out a way to main him and use him. It's amazing. And, yeah. Ugh, really well done. Super. After the, like, after the previous two episodes of Pure Darkness, he is literally a ray of sunshine. He is here to make everything feel better. Yep. That, that, they compare him to... Um... Who did Gage say he reminds him of? It's uh, Zaraki Kenpachi from Bleach. Mm -hmm. that, that he's like, I want him to be like this guy. And I'm like, oh my god, that's totally it. Because whenever Kenpachi would show up, you're like, oh shit. It's Kenpachi. <laughs> Everything's good. I can get that. I can get that feeling. Yeah, he's definitely... He definitely has that built into him. And he's... It's just a real shame that he's not... We need him. Please come back. We're, we're, beg we're begging on our hands, our knees. Just please come back. Feel... I need you back. <laughs> All right, let's go on to the next episode. Do you have anything else? Because we're just going to continue talking about how awesome Toto is in the next episode. <laughs> no, no, we can just talk more about it there. Okay, sweet. Uh, episode 45, Transformation. Now, 
We cut back from the previous episode where uh, Toto and Yuji are still fighting. Um, Mahito starts like <laughs> they have a fight sequence and Mahito is like fighting him and he has like his weird like head come off. He has like a weird like um, lobster face as his little face runs around and there's a, into a giant circle and Toto thinks of like the other great thing about Toto is that he's actually super crazy smart. So he figures like, hey, I bet like it works like this. All oh, right, I'm going to have my brother boogie boogie right in front of him, kick his ass. And then it doesn't end up like that. And he goes like, wait a minute. That's a little bit funky. Let me think about this. Let me ruminate. I've got you completely figured out now. Great. Um, because he also does this because he makes another transfigured human. But he makes him in a way that he like boils up multiple souls in them and he assumes that the highest it can be is a grade uh three or higher but when he hits them he's actually able to like blast them off and take off into a pretty far away from the battle and then when he hits back to it he kills it in one hit and he goes like what and he goes oh wait i understand he's using multiple souls so that they're super strong but they can't take a punch and at this point he sees that a whole bunch of them are coming for him and what he does is that he looks, he looks at them, he picks up his locket, which he carries around with him, he gives it a kiss, and he tells them, forgive me, you pitiful souls, as he's about to completely fucking rock their world. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Uh, we don't get to see that because we go back to Yuji and he's fighting Mahito. Mahito's using a bunch of his cursed dudes again to kind of try and get, uh, get him a little bit uh, weakened. Um... At this point, Maito realizes that his soul is actually very close to emerging. Um, and he's also trying to keep him away from Toto because he realizes that when he's with Toto, he's way stronger. It doesn't end up working and Toto's there and he's like, yo, I fucked up your shit. I'm here now. Um, and he goes, God damn it. I really need to take out this giant buff ass gorilla. The only way I can do that is if I try and unleash my domain where it would be an insta hit if I actually got him. Um... So he starts to, he lets go of the transformation. He tries to get to him. And while he uses his, um, his domain, he has a quick talk with Sukuna as he says, like, you know, I'm going to kill him. You understand that? I'm going to kill it, uh, Yuji and I'm going to kill him before you can switch. So good luck with that idiot. And that almost tells you 100% Mahito is about to fucking fail. Because Sukuna doesn't yeah, even bother yeah. to The, the look on Sukuna's face is really funny. It is. It's just like like looking at him like he's talking some stupid bullshit. Which he is. He is 100%. He's, he's telling this. He's like, oh, you're about to get your ass so unbelievably kicked. Um, so we cut back and he's actually able to touch um toto and what toto does is that he cuts off his um hand immediately before it can get to the rest of his body um the the chunks that go flying out of him hit the little hit him so that he's now in stationary and it also hits the little locket in his uh on his um on the top of him and it looks like it's coming come close to coming loose um maito goes to go for the kill but he's not actually able to uh hit him with his hand so he goes for a punch and toto on pure fucking instinct is able to block it in his stomach um and mahito's now able he has his like stuff up and he's like okay i'm gonna go for the kill i'm so certain about this he's about to fucking die things are looking real bad for toto and then the locket that is around his neck falls down as Maito slowly starts walking toward him. And we look and see what's inside the locket. And what's inside the locket? It's a picture of his number one idol and his brother Yuji. And Maito looks at it and he goes, what? Huh? And then he gets hit with what is probably the craziest fucking Toto imagination. As Toto is now with his stand, his idol. And he is rocking the shit out of him as he like gives him a smooch he does a victory lap his idol gets in on the action the idol kicks the shit out of maito this is all happening in his imagination this song is playing as well which is i believe actually sung by the lady who voices the idol 
Uh, at one point when he's punching him, he's also dressing up as, as like, a schoolgirl. As he's punching the shit out of Mahito, a bunch of, like, hearts come out of him. <laughs> as he's, like, nonstop, like, order order him. He puts his hand up in victory. Both him and the idol have a good old... <laughs> they have, like, the dramatic thing from Gintama where it's like, yeah, we're, we're fucking winning. And as he goes to handshake his idol, he slaps Mahito's hand, and that causes Boogie Woogie to activate. And Yuji comes in with a black flash and punches Sukuna, uh, not Sukuna, Mahito right in the face as Mahito goes, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> and we cut back to Toto who says, uh, it was only for a moment, but I touched him. And it looks like this is basically it for me. It's up to you now, brother. And he goes, okay. Yuji says, rest up, brother. I got it from here. Um, as Mahito goes to fight Yuji, he realizes that I am my soul is transforming. I finally unlocked my final form. And he hits you with the final form freeze a bit, where he turns into what is his now awakened soul bit, which is called... Um, it is called... It's like death something... I wish I could remember. It is the instant spirit body of the distorted killing. So yes, he goes at this point. He's pretty positive that he's going to win. He's like, whatever, do what you can. They start fighting each other. Um, uh, Yuji goes, this is bad because his skin is as tough or tougher than Chozo's was. And I had a hard time going through that as well. So they start fighting each other. They're both really, really tired. And Yuji goes, I no matter what, I have to hit him with a black flash. And a big reminder shows up that says, no one can actually do a black flash on command. It's not something that you can do. Uh, also, to show how fucked up Yuji is, it looks like it would. <laughs> it looks like uh, Sukuna's little mouth thing is showing up on his on his face. Actually, his skin is just gone. <laughs> yeah, his mouth is like ripped open. Yep. Yeah. It's just, oh, it's such a good visual to just show how fucked up he is right now. Um, as Mondo's fighting, he's like, okay, a Black Flash would be bad, but literally nobody can just do Black Flashes on command. There's no way that this guy can do that. And um, so he, it, when it looked like he was going to do one, he kind of backs away and usually starts like hitting his leg it's just to make it be like, hey, get the fuck up. And Mahito realizes that they're both just, like, super tired, but they're... He doesn't say that. He's like, it looks like you're just like me, huh? We're just both full of energy now. And so they start fighting each other. Uh, Yuji keeps going for the Black Flash. Um, this scares the shit out of Mahito, because he's like, this is not fair. <laughs> Literally, no one should be able to do this. And yet he's gonna... There's no way he can do it. And eventually it gets to the point where um, it looks like um, he is gonna do it, so they go for a face down, and that's when Toto shows up and says, hey, Cursed Spirit, uh, there's something that you need to understand, is that arms are just for decoration. <laughs> the act of an applause is the acclamation of the soul, and so he goes to go clap with his hands, and so he goes to attack where he assumes the Boogie Woogie is gonna activate, but it doesn't activate, and Toto goes, ah, damn, that sucks. My Wookie Wookie is actually already dead. He fucking tricked him. <laughs> he tricked them at the end. He tricked them. And Yuji goes for the Black Flash as Mighty go Mahito just looks at it dead on in the face and goes, ah, shit. Punched directly in the fucking dome. And it's a nice-ass Black Flash, too, as it just completely devastates him. He goes back to his previous form and he starts vomiting it up he goes like not yet not yet and he realizes that he's out of cursed people he looks so unbelievably pathetic that you're finally realizing this is the end <laughs> he looks so unbelievably like sad and he's not even doing any jokes and Yuji uh looks at him with like the care bear stare he says like listen i wanted to like reject you and i wanted to say like i'm not you that we're different but I'm, I'm not, so I'm just going to kill you. If you ever get reborn, I'm going to kill you. And if you get reborn again, I'm going to kill you. No matter what, you can change your name, you can change your appearance, you can change whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm going to find you. I'm going to kill you. I don't have a reason for it. Maybe someday they'll in the history books, they'll have a reason as to why I'm doing this. But just to let you know, I don't have a fucking reason for this. I'm just going to fucking kill you. And as he's doing this, Mahito's giving him, like, a... He's, like, Courage the Cowardly Dog as he's crying. 
And he goes, you're right, we are in a war, and this is my role. And then that's when he hits him up with the Chainsaw Man snow, as <laughs> the snow is now enveloped around both of them, and Mahito starts running, and the visualization here is that Mahito is a little rabbit in the snow, and Yuji is the wolf, and he is coming to kill his prey. Uh, he tries to... F- fight back against Yuji by throwing like snowballs which is really funny because when they show it back into the actual uh what's actually happening he's hitting them with like mud and shit like mud that has a rock in it um and he's crawling away Yuji is beating the shit out of him and then that's when uh he sees Ghetto and he says do you want me to save you Mahito and that is where the episode ends and that is where we leave off Jujutsu Kaisen for now that's the end of episode 45. What do you think, Zen? So, so good. So good. Uh, mm. Oh my god, so good. I love this fucking fight. I love uh, Mahito turning into like a little piss baby as he's about to die. It's such a good way to die because fucking hate him. Yes. Uh, he's a real piece of shit. Hate this guy. Um, the, the clap trick... Where he's like, you don't need hands. Clapping is a, the, <laughs> the soul. And then you, um, and then it's a complete bullshit. Like it doesn't work at all. Yeah. Uh, so good. The bit where um, he he goes to like transform and he rips the skin off Yuji's face and then they both stand up and like does the whole oh we're uh, we're both ready to keep going like they're obviously on their last legs mm-hmm. um so good it's so good it's so good dude it's so yeah. good this is the way you want the villain to go down you want you want especially for this type of villain where the villain is very much a yeah 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 like he's such a like little shit he's such a like i'm here to have a good goofy time you need to see him with fear you need to see the fear of god put into him yeah he, you you need to see this guy and be like i i need you to suffer exactly <laughs> horribly i need you to be in just objective agony <laughs> like yeah this, it's the only way man it's the only way 100 percent. you need to be in this situation it's like they say when uh you tr- you show your true self when you're about to die this is what he actually is someone who is a coward someone who is the the only reason that he's never afraid is that he was so positive no one could actually attack his soul outside of sukuna and now he's learning that no there was someone else out there that could and now i'm so unbelievably fucked all my bag of tricks they're gone everything is gone i got my ass kicked by some guy who thought he and his idol were beating the shit out of me i don't know what happened there (laughs) i'm so done it's so so cooked and then he's running away that's the best part is that when this very rarely happens when the villain gives the you and i aren't so different and then the hero actually retorts back with uh you know what i think you're right because for the most part the hero says we're nothing we're nothing like each other that's why i'm gonna let you live and yuji's like no you're right I'm going to have to kill you. We're going to, it's Yuji talking to old Yuji and he's going, we're going to have to kill this guy, Yuji. And he goes, oh man. <laughs> but he's doing it with himself. It's like at the beginning of Jujutsu Kaisen Yuji to current day Yuji, it is them looking at each other going, damn. But except for he's happy to see it. And the way he just like straight up is like, which is really funny because Jogo gets the whole like, I can't wait for us to all see each other again. And Yuji is here to tell Mahito there is no peace for you. There is- <laughs> yeah, no matter what happens, I will find you. I will find you. I will kill you. There is no safe haven for you. You should just stop existing. <laughs> that is your only... <laughs> the only way out of this is to stop existing. It's amazing. So well done. And yeah, all the Toto stuff, great. Oh man, Shibuya is just so good is such a uh, man board. also i don't know if you i don't know if it, you do you know what like the volume covers for jjk are uh no not all of them so um one of the poses that takata and uh toto strike together is the cover of volume five it's toto's volume cover oh really 
Yeah, hang on. Let me let me send it to you because I took a screenshot exactly for this moment. Um, this. <laughs> That's great. If the... yeah, it's it's the it's the volume cover visual. It's fucking awesome. I love it so much. It's really good, man. Yeah, fuck, man. He was. There is just so much. I love that everyone is just like in agreements of Toto is like the number one. He is that dude. He's him. Yeah, dude. He's he's him. He's hashtag him. He is. People are saying like, damn, the finally the autistic hero for our generation. He's here to get it all done. <laughs> he is. He is being loved in a way that I could not see uh, ever imagining happening, and I love it. I love it that. He's a character that just gets to exist because uh, when my friends who are uh, animes only get to him and I'm like, yeah, Toto's real fucking good. And then they see this and they're like, oh, my fucking God, this is what is like, yeah, you should have been reading the manga when I told you it was so good. It's amazing. Oh, dude. It's so, so good. Yeah. Just fucking mm, legendary. It legendary. is legendary. And that is it for these episodes. I am. 100 it is it is a lot of these episodes were us saying this is just so fucking good but this is literally what we've been waiting for it is i knew this was gonna happen when we got to the later half basically when um uh, megami starts fighting his dad i knew that that from that point on it was just gonna be non-stop like bang 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 to the point where it's like it's funny seeing people react to it live after you've already experienced it like that feeling of like i got to see other people experience the thing of like i don't know i just feel like we could have spent a little bit more time with the characters i'm like yeah i bet you do feel that mm, way yeah i bet you feel that way don't you motherfucker <laughs> i remember when i felt that way Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> seeing it all come up it's really funny um it's an amazing thing to see, and this is really, truly... We'll talk about it probably more uh, two weeks from now when both of the episodes out, but this is just a banger of an arc in general. Shibuya has just been so fucking good. Even the one thing where I just spent had to spend a whole bunch of time getting the monkey off my back, that's because of the stuff that comes after it. It just so happens that the, sym the symptoms started here, <laughs> but other than that, it's just full-on gas. It is what you would want from an arc i would say it's probably one of the better of the new gen arcs it's probably one of the best ones out there isn't it if i were to think about it let me see yeah i think i'm, I'm willing to make that bold statement assuming that the others that came up um it's between this and chainsaw man <laughs> the, cha the the chainsaw man arc has not come out yet but i really do like the ending of part one of chainsaw man where the places it goes um but I'll wait for people to experience. It's funny that I don't want to spoil Chainsaw Man. I'm willing to spoil yeah, all yeah, the others. Chainsaw but... Man, you gotta, you gotta be careful. With, yeah, with that that one. Be... Yeah, 100 percent real. Recognize real. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, my hero. Yeah, sure. We'll spoil at this point. Yeah, who gives a shit? Fuck yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. Like, uh, whatever. Whatever. Old news. As I look at it, I go like, "Hurry up, baby! Hurry up and get fighting." end already as i scream at it as opposed to jesus yeah. guys in where i say wait a little bit <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing i need them i need the both mangakas to kind of sit down and go like you want to just kind of trade off on <laughs> the writing for a bit because apparently you can really extend something and i can end it quickly maybe we can help each other out in this situation yeah. can we like team up <laughs> exactly create an unstoppable force but yeah, that's it for Jujutsu Kaisen. That is episodes 40 for 45. Uh, and we will be back two weeks from now for the ending of it. We might actually... I don't know. We might have to talk about it just because I know the ending is on. So on the day that this releases, which is Thursday, that will release episode 46. And then on the 28th, that releases episode... Um, 47 and that is the final episode for the season i don't know if we want to maybe just wait like because usually we record on wednesdays maybe we record on thursday that day and then just release it i don't know we'll figure it out it's either that or wait like an additional like two weeks just wait the two weeks uh -huh. and, and record on the fourth we'll see we'll record on the third i mean the third of um july in the new year and that's when we'll end it I don't know. Yeah, we'll check the we'll check the vibes. We'll, we'll, see che the vibes we'll check are. the vibes. You know how we do with the vibes. I'm probably not going to be working all that much 
But that doesn't mean the same thing for Zen. You know, we got obligations and shit. <laughs> yeah, Family life stuff. Yeah, do be fucking crazy. Exactly. We'll figure it out. But, yeah. Thank you very much for joining us. As always, if you want some more Zenrod content and keep up to date with the current ongoings with the Shonen Jump world, you can go over to his channel and check out Shonen and Chill, where he talks about all the good stuff. It's funny that we recorded Gintama first, so this is the second time we're going to be doing this bit, and the second week I'm just tired. It's really good. Check out his show. And if you want some more me stuff, check out my channel. Hopefully I'll be able to release some stuff. There's been like one Christmas game that I've been wanting to... Uh, there's like been a lot of games that I've been wanting to play for the channel where I just I just have not had the time to go sit down. Same Similar to our streaming that we've been doing where it's like, yeah, I want to play uh, the sequel to Pokemon TCG 2 and get streaming for that and uh, get all that uploaded as well. Yes, yes. And then look into maybe doing... A lot of this talk about the Hunter x Hunter fighting game has reminded me that Naruto Clash of the Ninja is a game that exists. I feel like we should do <laughs> a video. It's the only fighting game I'm 100% positive I could beat you in because I used to... Oh, certainly, because I don't, I don't know how to play. <laughs> you don't know how to play it, and I used to play it in tournaments back in the day. Oh, like yeah. Local you know, tournaments. You got me there for sure. Yeah. There's a video of me playing it with my brother, and it's a lot of him going like, do you just remember all this? And I go, yes. <laughs> do you, <laughs> yes, do you I just, do. Yes, I do. All the mic guy strings have been... Re- they stayed the same from Clash of the Ninja 2, 3, 4, and the Wii game. <laughs> they never changed. <laughs> it's the side of a true fighting game. <laughs> uh, and yeah, we'll look into that. And if you are for the Christmas time, because Christmas time is coming up, we'll have something to release uh, related to Gintama, so that should be fun. But yeah, that's the end of the video, everyone. It's been a very long time. I'm ready to drink some water. It's been a very long day of recording for us as well. <laughs> Zen has been recording for a long time. Yes, I've been in business or, meetings. I've been recording since seven, going on six hours of recording straight. Jesus Christ, man. That's a lot. That's a lot of dedication. <laughs> That's why you gotta go to Zen's channel. Yeah, support him as well as me. Until next time, everyone, we wish you guys the best and we'll be back for the next time you the next time we talk about jujutsu kaisen that's the end of season two and we will talk about the potential future of where we go from here uh when that happens till next time everyone say goodbye zen goodbye everybody and this time i remembered to hit stop record instead of leave the call boom (laughs) hey it's two for two also you didn't get the last thing i didn't i mean